dear students today in this video lecture we are going to start with the subject basic electronics this is the first unit it is on diode this is the first part of the video the topics those we are going to cover in this video are concept of pn junction in semiconductor forward and reverse biasing of pn junction diode symbol and forward and reverse characteristics of semiconductor diode okay so we will directly go to the chapter starting with concept of pn junction in semiconductor okay now before that we must know what is semiconductor for this we must have a basic knowledge about semiconductor i think all of you have already studied in your 10 plus 2 or 10th class what is semiconductor as the name suggests it is semi plus conductor so you know that conductors have a very good property in carrying current whereas there are certain substances known as insulators which are very bad in conducting electricity now the semiconductor is such a material which has the conductivity in between this conductor and insulator okay so we can say that semiconductors are class of materials whose electrical conductivity lies between that of a conductor and an insulator and for your knowledge you must know that the conductivity of semiconductors generally lies between 10 to the power 4 to 2 seals per meter okay most commonly used semiconductors are germanium and silicon okay so we need some little knowledge about the types of semiconductors before going into deep that is before knowing about the pn junction okay there are basically two types of semiconductors one is intrinsic semiconductor another is extrinsic semiconductor as you can see here the intrinsic semiconductor is nothing but in the purest form of the substance means when there is no impurity mixed up with the semiconductor germanium silicon all like that then we call it as intrinsic semiconductor whereas when some kind of impurities are mixed with intrinsic semiconductors we get extrinsic semiconductors okay now the mixing up of impurity gives us a doped version of the intrinsic semiconductor that is a doped intrinsic semiconductor is basically our extrinsic semiconductor so you can see this is the structure of a germanium atom okay so this is the nucleus of the germanium atom and here these are basically covalent bonds between two germanium atoms and these are the valence electron of the germanium atom means the electrons which are basically present at the outermost orbit of the atom okay so in such a manner with four electrons in outermost orbit and sharing these electrons with the nearby atoms germanium basically makes a crystal like structure okay you can see same kind of structure for silicon also because the number of valence electrons present in silicon atom is also four okay so basically these two are the most commonly used semiconductor materials in electronics next extrinsic semiconductor we will know briefly about the extrinsic semiconductor because these are the most important materials which are basically used for making semiconductor devices as well as the pn junction so intrinsic semiconductors are basically of two types one is p type another is n type now what is p type if a trivalent impurity is added to an intrinsic semiconductor in a small amount the type of semiconductor we get is called as p type semiconductor okay and when some amount of pentavalent impurity is added to a pure semiconductor then we get a type of semiconductor which is called as n type semiconductor as we know the example of intrinsic semiconductor so now we will know about the materials which are generally added as trivalent or pentavalent impurities generally gallium and indium are some trivalent impurities which are added to intrinsic semiconductors for making p type semiconductor okay and arsenic antimony phosphorus are generally those pentavalent impurities which add to intrinsic semiconductors for producing n type semiconductors okay so in this regard we must know about holes and electrons okay so you can see here we have added 
drive an impurity to an intrinsic semiconductor which is here taken to be as germanium so see as the trivalent impurity is there that is our gallium so it tries to make covalent bonds with other germanium atoms now in this bond making process what happens due to deficiency of one electron in the valence bond of the, in the valence band or the valence orbit of the germanium atom there is a deficiency of electron and that deficiency of electron is basically called as hole and we generally consider the absence of this electron as a positively charged condition and we take it as hole okay in actual sense it is not positively charged but the absence of electron is taken to be as positive here okay so the structure we get here is the 2d crystal structure of a p type semiconductor where we can see there are certain amount of holes present in the structure and holes are basically called as majority carriers in p type semiconductor means the current which is produced in a p type semiconductor that is due to this majority carriers or the holes and now we will see the structure of a n type semiconductor we know that for the production of n type semiconductor we have to add pentavalent impurity to an intrinsic semiconductor so in this figure you can see we have added arsenic to the germanium that is to the pure germanium so as the arsenic is a pentavalent as the arsenic is a pentavalent material so in the creation of covalent bonds in between arsenic and gallium atoms germanium atoms there is an excess of electron so this electron basically present field inside the crystal structure and these excess electrons which are present in the n type semiconductor crystal or semiconductor material is the majority carriers in such kind of semiconductors because the current which is produced inside n type semiconductor crystal that is basically due to this majority carriers that is the electrons okay so i think it is now clear to all of you what is a p type semiconductor and what is a n type semiconductor and you also understood that this two types of semiconductor are basically impure type of semiconductor and comes under the category of extrinsic semiconductor okay now as we have gathered some knowledge about p type and n type semiconductor so without delaying any more we will straight go on to the topic pn junction okay what is the concept of pn junction as the name suggests you can see the definition is also given here when a p type semiconductor is suitably joined or basically fused to n type semiconductor or maybe the reverse condition is there the contact surface is called the pn junction by this process the contact surface which is created is termed as pn junction or the device which you get out of this process is called the pn junction diode okay you can easily see here this is the p type material and this is the n type material and this is the portion where these two materials have been fused to form a single structure okay so what is happening here as we know that in p type material there is abundance of holes and in n type materials there is abundance of electrons so at the junction where these two materials are basically fused or joined to form this pn junction there a process of diffusion takes place what is diffusion diffusion is a process in which the majority carriers from the n side crosses the junction comes to the p side and combine with the holes to uncover negative ions in this process also positive ions are created in the n type material 
So what is happening? Electrons from inside go to the p side near the junction to uncover the negative ions in p type material. In this process, positive ions are also created near the junction in the n type materials. And this region where the majority carriers are basically depleted in both the p type and the n type material is termed as depletion region. Okay, is termed as depletion region. As the region is depleted out of the majority carriers, the region is termed as depletion region. So you can see here, due to the charge present in the P side and the N side, because of the uncovered ions, there will be a creation of the field or a potential in the depletion region. So there is an inbuilt field which is present at the junction where we join P type and the N type material. And it also creates a potential difference. And this potential difference is basically termed as the barrier potential. Okay. The potential of the depletion region is also termed as the barrier potential. So from this figure, you can easily see this barrier potential and how it is basically coming into account. So this is your P side. This is your N side. Due to diffusion, during the process of PN junction creation, some electrons move from this side to this side to uncover negative ions. And in this process, positive ions are uncovered in the n type region. So, this region is basically acting as a barrier. That is our potential barrier, which is having certain amount of potential. That potential is graphically shown here. From negative to positive, low to high. And this barrier potential basically different for different types of material. If the PN junction is created with silicon, then the barrier potential generally 0.7 volt. Whereas, if the junction is created with germanium, then the PN junction is generally having a barrier potential of 0.3 volt. Okay. So, you can see here also that it is termed as the unbiased PN junction. Okay, so in the next slide, we are going to learn about biasing. Okay, so now what is biasing of PN junction or PN junction diode? As the PN junction is also termed as diode, so we will call it as PN junction diode. What is biasing? Biasing is basically application of a DC voltage across the junction. That is the PN junction. Okay, so there are basically three types of bias. First one is zero bias. From the name, you can understand that when there is no voltage applied across this junction, then the kind of bias we are getting is called as zero bias. Next is our forward bias. When the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the P region and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the N region, then we call it as the forward bias. Okay. In forward biasing, what happens? As you see, in forward biasing, the positive terminal is connected to P and the negative terminal is connected to the N region. In the N region, the majority carriers are electrons, whereas in P region, majority carriers are holes. Now see, in the depletion region, there is already an inbuilt electric field. So you can see here, the arrow in one is showing the direction of the electric field by the applied voltage, whereas the arrow 2 is showing the direction of the electric field by the inbuilt electric field of the PN junction. So, the direction of the electric field of this applied voltage and the direction of the electric field of this potential barrier is opposite to each other. So, ultimately, the applied field reduces the inbuilt electric field and by this, the potential barrier becomes very thinner so, it helps to conduct electricity through the junction. As the barrier becoming thinner, but the resistance of the barrier is also very low. Thus, in this scenario, we call the PN junction is in forward bias or in the on state, in which it can easily conduct electricity through itself. Okay. And the arrow 3 is basically showing you the conventional current. And arrow 4 is showing the flow of electron. Okay, now the reverse bias. In the reverse bias, what happens? The positive terminal of the battery 
is connected to the N side and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the P side. Due to this, basically the inbuilt electric field and the electric field due to applied voltage acts in the same direction. So the potential barrier basically increased this, it produces a very high resistance path. So basically it resists electricity from flowing. Due to this, the reverse bias condition of a PN junction is generally termed as the off state of the PN junction. And in this scenario, no current basically flows through the PN junction for an ideal diode. And a very little current flows for a practical diode. Okay. So these are basically the forward and reverse biasing of a PN junction or a PN junction diode.